Hi children, it's Grandma Carla, and we're going to read some more of Stories of the Pilgrims. Farewell to Holland. When all was ready, they bade their Dutch friends goodbye. How kind these people had been to them during the years that they had lived in Holland. They had done all they could to make the pilgrims happy and comfortable in their city. And when they were preparing to go away, many made balls of cheese, little tubs of butter, and webs of white linen came from these good Hollanders. John Robertson and all the members of his church went to Delfshaven with those who were to sell, sail on the speedwell. As the canal boats moved slowly away, the pilgrims looked for the last time upon their little cottages. They had lived twelve long years in Holland, and it seemed like a dear home to them. Most of the children had never known any other home. Groups of Hollanders stood at their doors to wave farewell to the pilgrims as they passed. Five or six little boys with bare legs and clumsy wooden shoes ran along beside the canal boats, calling the Dutch, calling in Dutch to their friends. But now the boys had shouted a last goodbye the city with its great mills and shops, its quaint houses and pretty gardens lay behind them. They were coming to the beautiful city gate with its round towers and pointed spires. Mary Chilton and Fear and Patience Brewster stood together at the large gate. Do you remember the first time we passed through this gate, Mary? asked Patience. That was 11 years ago and you were a very little girl then. Yes, indeed, I remember it, answered Mary. I was six years old. I can remember our home in England and the ship in which we came to Holland. Can you, Fear? I do not remember much about England, answered Fear, who was the youngest of the three, but I remember our home in Amsterdam. I wonder where Jan and Katrina are this summer. Their boat was in Leiden all winter. And so the girls talked of anything except the long parting they could not speak of that. The tears were so close to Fear's eyes, she was afraid to blink lest they run over. This was a beautiful summer day. Holland Meadows had never looked brighter. There were charming little summer houses perched on stilts by the side of the lake. Some stood in the water and a little boat tied to the steps of one showed how its owner had reached it. There he sat smoking his long pipe and watching his little son, who sat on the doorstep and fished. Everywhere were the windmills, the dikes, the canals that had seemed so strange to them at first. Now all these things seemed like old friends to the pilgrims and made them sad to say goodbye to Holland. Late in the evening, they reached Elfshaven, where the speedwell was waiting for them. All night the sailors worked, loading the goods from the canal boats into the ship and making ready for an early start in the morning. Then came the hardest parting. The tears would start. Even strong men wept as they looked into each other's faces and thought that perhaps they might never see these friends again. There on the ocean shore, these brave men and women knelt down and prayed to the God they loved. They prayed that he would be with those who stayed as well as with those who sailed away. Their pastor's voice broke many times as he spoke to God of his friends. After this prayer, the pilgrims went silently and sadly on board the speedwell and sailed away to England. They waved to the dear ones on the shore and stood watching them as long as they could be seen. Write a couple of sentences to tell why it was so difficult for the pilgrims to say farewell to their Dutch friends. And there were no pictures on this lesson at all. So write a couple of sentences to tell why it was so difficult for the pilgrims to say farewell to their Dutch friends. This is Grandma Carla. I love you.